like I said, I was telling Lauren, we used to do weekly, like Monday night calls, which was good, but I found myself doing a whole lot of work just for one call. And then maybe a lot of people didn't show up because it's not really a good time. Honestly, it was not a good time for our family uh, to do calls on, at night like that. And so um, Melanie and the dream team started to do this weekly series of like, you know, highlighting spotlighting coaches and training that way and so a lot of coaches have just cut out team calls all together but I like to do it because we are a team I mean like we all live all over the country and I like to see you guys and talk to you guys and share some things because <clears throat> a lot of times you're not going to get from them you know the the faith focus of you're going to hear a lot of stuff from other teams that maybe I wouldn't teach or maybe they may not resonate with you not that my way is the only way, but um, I do want to share with you some things today that have been working for me and my business and really help you guys, but just by giving you some ideas. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And like I said, I'm just going to mute you guys because it cuts out, cuts out the background noise so you can hear, uh, but please, please, please unmute yourself if you want to stop me and ask a question. I don't mind. I'm a teacher and that doesn't bother me. Okay, so, um, but real quickly, and you can chat. Hey, Carrie. Hey, hey, Dale. So you can chat in the sidebar too if you want to ask a question that way. This is super, super user friendly. All right. Um, but I am going to let me say a prayer first before we get started, and then I'll jump into it. Okay. Um, God, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for these few minutes that we have to to connect, to um, grow our businesses, to learn together. And God, I pray that we would honor you in what we do here today and with our businesses, God. Just thank you so much for this blessing, um, for where you're leading us, and, and please just continue to help us grow in you first of all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> all right, guys. Um, so I want to talk to you guys today about, I'm going to give you all this is focused on helping you guys in the month strong. Uh, you may be like in the month, it's the 20th, but we have today's the 20th. So we've got less than two weeks before the end of the month. And I don't say that to stress you out. I say that to kind of help you focus and help you really figure out what are your goals for this month. If you're going for success club, then obviously you have to be inviting people to our challenge groups. Um, and so my challenge group for this month, the first one, first two have already started, but I am going to tell you in a minute, I've created another one to help you guys have something to invite to but we're going to talk strategy and we're specifically going to talk Instagram stories. And also I'm going to talk to you about recruiting coaches because I know some of you guys are at success club and in order to grow our businesses, we've got to be signing people up as coaches to, to work the business or just for the discount. And some of you guys are there, and that's kind of where my focus is right now, too. Um, I want to challenge you guys. Like, I want to challenge you guys first with this, because this was on my heart yesterday, because I was typing something to a potential challenger and a potential coach, and I, whenever I was talking to her, I used language from my mission. And so do you have a mission? And it doesn't have to be like mine. It can be whatever you want it to be. But what is your purpose? Like, what do you hope to fulfill as a coach? Because if you're just kind of out there inviting and running challenge groups and not going anywhere, then you're just not going to go anywhere, right? Um, and so I want to challenge you to come up with your own mission. And I mean, like, pray about it, talk about it in your head, write down some key words and, and have it written out before tomorrow night, before you write out that Sunday night challenge group post, because I'll tell you this, I use this language in my mission every single day. I use it in conversations. I use it in, in posts that I write. I use it in emails that I send and it helps me focus and it doesn't ever leave me questioning what am I doing here, right? Um, and so my mission is to inspire and empower women in their health and in business to honor God with what we have been blessed with to show women that they can do hard things and break strongholds that have held them down for too long. And then you see my scripture verse, okay? Um, and so like when I was messaging, so for example, when I sent an invite to someone yesterday and I was like, hey, this was somebody I was converting a conversation. I said, hey, you know, I know we we're talking about this, but I'm really focused this month on helping moms um, just really take control of their health again and to realize that with just 30 minutes, you know, and a little bit of mail 
meal prep that you can change your body and you can get back to where you want to be or you can do what you want to do with this. And so I used that in an invitation that I sent and it was genuine. It was true. It was from my heart. It wasn't icky. It wasn't like, hey, do you want to join my challenge group? It was a way that I connected and I shared my mission at the same time. So if I write a challenge group post or a coaching invite post, I can do the same thing. I can, I can tell a little bit of my story. I can say I'm looking for five women this month. I want to show women. I want to teach them how to build a business, to honor God with it, um, to, to take what we have been given and to bless others. So I can use that language every single day in, in conversations and in posts. So my challenge for you today is to pray over it. Think about it. What is your mission? Um, and again, it doesn't have to sound like mine. It doesn't have to be like mine. You can use mine as an outline if you want to, but have a focus. And I promise you that you will, you will be less fearful of sending that invite to somebody. You will be less fearful of or wondering, how do I word this challenge group post? You'll have something to start with every single time. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? Um, all right, so announcements. Josh Coates, this is amazing, guys. I pray, 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 pray that you guys are really pushing for this. Josh Coates, if you don't know who he is, he's like, he's called, he's his self-proclaimed push coach. Um, he is somebody who's been like through John Maxwell training. He is a believer. He doesn't talk about it a lot. I don't think in his trainings necessarily, but he is a very, very sought after push coach. Okay. And so he has agreed to, to train us next month. Melanie paid for him. And so that's awesome in itself. You would have to pay hundreds of dollars to get access to this type of training. Um, but there are some requirements obviously, right? You have to hit Success Club 5. You have to be an Emerald coach, which means you have two coaches under you. You have to have at least 700 volume points from customers, or you have to recruit two coaches. You don't have to do both of those. Um, so if you're, if you're not an Emerald coach right now and you become an Emerald by recruiting two coaches, boom, that's it. All you have to do is hit Success Club 5, okay? Um, so that is amazing. And I know that Carrie has qualified for it, that I have qualified for it, that Sarah has qualified for it. Um, so keep pushing for that because I'm, I'm, I'm very, if you would just believe me, this will be worth what it takes to push to get there. Um, it will be an incredible training and you'll grow a lot through that. Um, Monday night, the dream team, we are having a surge call. So Melanie, I think wants to do this like once a month, maybe. Um, and that call is going to be myself, uh, Megan Blinka, Jen, Jen Guthrie and Melanie. And we're going to be talking about, Melanie's going to give some updates. Jen Guthrie is going to share some social media tips that have really been working well for her. Girl just hit like Success Club 46, so something must be working, right? Um, and so she's going to share um, some of that. I'm going to talk about conversations, and then Megan is going to share with you about how do you promote a dev session now that it's already started, okay? And that's going to be really helpful, too. I'm going to talk to you guys about what I'm doing as well. Um, so definitely put that on your calendar. It's Monday night at 8 o'clock. That will be so worth it. And again, guys, as you go into these trainings, these surge calls and things, don't go into it thinking I have to do everything these people are doing. Um, take the ideas, you know, figure out what you have time to do, what you can do, implement it, and then go from there. That's really important. I used to think I had to do everything that they talked about on the calls, and I drowned myself. Um, success club trip. So you have to get on the list saying, hey, I want to register for this if I qualify. Um, I posted about this in our team page, and you can look for it in the FAQs in the Coach Online office. Um, success club trip next year is a cruise to the Bahamas. Matt and I did that two years ago. It was awesome. Um, and so definitely if you want to do that, get on that list to qualify. You have to be working your business in order to go, but they let people off the list every single month. So make sure you're on that list if you want to go. Um, team up. That starts in February. If you're not on a cup team, please let me know. Um, I know that there's a few of you guys who are not yet, so let me know about that because um, that's always fun. You just team up in teams of five coaches. They're not just from our team. They can be from all over. You might get paired up with somebody from another team, um, but that's good. I think that's a really good thing to, to learn from other teams and how other coaches do it. So please let me know. Send me a message today if you're not registered for a team cup and want to be. All right, so um, what's coming up? 
So like I said, my challenge groups have already started for this month, but I know that a lot of you guys are not at Success Club yet and you need something to invite to. So I am going to start a challenge group if you guys have people for it on January 29th. And I know that some of you will. I know that you guys are working and you're talking and you're inviting. And so January 29th, we'll start with prep week. And so that will be just a kind of a continuation of like I did a Make to Thrive um, challenge group January 1. This will just kind of be the same concept. We'll start with prep week. Um, you guys can help me lead it. I would love that if you want to. And so invite, be inviting to that. Um, I'll also, if you are doing 80 day obsession, then you probably have people who are interested in 80 day obsession. So what we're going to do is we currently have an 80 day obsession challenge group that started the eighth with prep week. We are just finishing week one. And so um, we will start what we're going to call round two in February. I'm not going to start another group, but what I'm going to do is kind of bring people in in phases. So I am doing a little obsessed prep group right now. So guys, you can be inviting people to that. If you've got people who are interested in it, but they are not ready to commit financially, what I'm doing is I have some people signing up with 80 day of session challenge packs who are going to do the prep group, but I have a lot of people who are just creating a free account um, or even doing the bod trial. And so when they do that, they get access to a little obsessed, right? And so they have the workouts. And in that group, I'm going to talk to them about time nutrition again. I'm going to share a meal plan with them every single week and challenge them to do a meal plan. And then they're going to do the workouts. And I'm just going to post in there. And again, if you guys want to help me with that, like if you want to take a week and help me do that as we lead up to next month. So when that's done, hopefully people will get results. They'll they'll get experience with Beach Body on Demand. They'll kind of understand a little bit about time nutrition, and then they will be ready to commit to that round two of 80 day obsession in February. And so I think that that will start on February 12th. Maybe I'll have to look at my calendar, but that's what I wrote down. Um, so do you guys have any questions about that? Because I know a lot of people are talking to people about this. May have questions. Okay. All right. Um, and then, so after that, my next challenge group will not start until February 19th. And I call that an elimination challenge group because I did this elimination challenge with Melanie and some other coaches um, earlier, like late 2017. And that's kind of going to be my focus of that group, like eliminating negativity, eliminating, you know, certain foods, eliminating um, a lot of things and really getting on track with our health. So that's kind of my, my calendar for the next month or so. And it's also opportunities for you guys to invite to as well. Um, but, you know, like with, with all access, you know, we're not anymore just recommending one program automatically when we talk to people. Um, what I tell people when I start a conversation is like, tell me what your goals are. Um, you know, where are you at in your fitness? And then I say, you know, we have all access. I'll help you pick a program to get you started. And then I just plug people into the right place. All right. Um, so don't let that overwhelm me. Um, Okay, connecting. I've talked to a lot of you guys and it seems like that connecting and, and growing your market seems to be a huge issue for you guys. And I'll tell you that keeping that invite funnel open, like I'm talking about, I talk about so many times, adding new friends, tracking those friends, um, starting conversations with those people, building relationships, like those are the people who are going to be your next challengers. All right. So it's so important, and these are just a few quick tips, okay? It's so important to, one, you have to be growing your market. You have to be adding friends and following people on Instagram and Facebook. Like, if you're not, you're not going to have, you're not going to have anybody to talk to or to see what you're posting or to connect with, right? So every single day since I've been a coach, I have added at least at least five new friends. Okay. I started with Facebook. Then now I do Facebook and Instagram. So every day you have to be expanding your network. Um, I started with less than 200 coaches. I mean, 200 friends on Facebook. Um, that would never would have cut it today. I have like 4,000 something, you know, and obviously they haven't all signed up, but you have more people seeing what I'm doing. Okay. So be adding friends, write those names down as you get people to accept your friend request. If they accept it on Facebook, 
uh, write their name down. On Instagram, um, if you follow them, or especially if they follow you back, like write their name down somewhere. You can do it in your calendar. I used to just write it down in my calendar for the longest time, or you can track it in Google Streak. You can do like a Google Sheet, um, create a spreadsheet of people, and you can have the little tabs at the bottom where you click, you know, added friends, and then you can have a tab and move them over once you start to connect with them. You can move have a tab for sending hey girl messages, and then you can have a tab for invites and follow-ups. Like it's not hard to organize, but if you're not organizing, you're gonna you're gonna be lost, okay? And you're gonna lose those people. So another thing that you can do is on Facebook, um, you can create friends lists. So like as you if you have people that you're connecting with, you can have a connecting friends list so that in that in that feed only those people show up and you can just kind of show them the love in that Facebook feed and if you want me to show you that I can make you a video about how to do that it's not hard um, but definitely be expanding your net network make sure that you're tracking and that you're going back to those people and that you're connecting with them and you're building relationships and I'm telling you you will never ever ever run out of people to talk to you will never run out of people to invite you know I had a girl tell me yesterday that there are so many Beachbody coaches in my area Area. And I'm like, it doesn't matter because we run our business on social media. And like, I have people from the UK, from Canada, from Washington State, from all over. I mean, I'm looking at you guys, y'all are spread out too. And so, you know, you're not going to run out of people to talk to. You just have to be working your business every day. Um, and, and so that is, that's really, really important. I want to stress that. All right. Now I'm shifting gears. Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. Um, I'm shifting gears to stories. Stories have been working for me. Um, and I see a lot of you guys doing it too, and that's that makes me excited. Um, so I did not, stories are kind of new as far as like when my business started. I just grew my business on Facebook personally, you know, my Facebook personal page for the longest time. Um, then I realized that Instagram was growing and there were a lot of ways to work Instagram. And guys, you work Instagram the same way you work Facebook. You add people, you start to follow people, they follow you back. You start to build relationships, you comment, you like their photos, um, then you start to send messages, and then you invite. You work it the same way, okay? But there are hashtags and stories and things like that now. And so um, I, what I realize is that people love stories. Like you're going to have people who just follow your feed, and you're going to have people who love to watch you do stuff, okay? And so that is what stories is about. Like stories is about like real life. Just be yourself. Share your interest. I'm going to move on to this thing. Um, share your interest. Show your workouts that you're doing. I mean, I know that Dale does a really good job. She goes live a lot on there, and she shows videos. Um, Christy has been doing Instagram stories of her workouts and, like, her meals and when she makes food and stuff like that. But show real life. That's what Instagram stories is. Your, your Instagram feed is just kind of like you want it to look pretty and a little more put together, Instagram is not put together. I mean, stories are not put together. It's just what people see you doing throughout the day, okay? So you can do so much with this, and I don't want you guys to limit yourself to just, like, workout videos or pictures of your food. Like, throw a lot of stuff in there that is not even, like, beach body or coaching related. Um, you know, ask people questions. Like, the other day, I asked people if I should paint my door pink, and I got, like, so much interaction on that poll. And, and I'm telling you, people come to these to interact, okay? So don't be afraid to use those polls and ask questions and tell people to message you, okay? Um, like I said, show non-beach body related things about you. Show what your family's doing today on a Saturday. Um, do, do a few... Um, uh, videos and then do a still. If you do just like a ton of videos in a row, people check out and they stop watching. But my rule is kind of, and I have a really good training that I've shared with you guys, but I'll share it again. Um, Andrea Crowder, but she says to do like two or three videos and then a still or a boomerang and then two or three videos and then a still or a boomerang. Okay. Um, and so it's just get used to it. Just figure it out, play with it. Carl Deichler challenged us to, to do our personal development. I mean, our, do our power hour in stories every day. You can invite in stories. You can invite through a live video. You can invite with a still shot. Like right here, this one right here um, is me inviting to do people to a little obsessed. Um, and I just use a poll and people click on the poll. They can tell me if they want to join. Um, and I never do yes or no. Um, because what I have found is that you have a lot of negative Nancy's that love through, like to go through and click no on your polls. Okay. And so like one, it's a mindset for me. And two, I don't really, I don't, 
I don't want people that are gonna say no, I want people that are gonna say yes, so I don't really give them an option, right? Um, so this was a little obsessed, and I said, um, you in? And I, one says, heck yeah, and one says, send me info to join. So if people don't wanna join, they don't have to click, right? Okay, so I'm only going to get people who are actually interested in joining. So don't be afraid to invite, do a live video. I did that yesterday. I did two or three um, like videos of me talking about this a little obsessed group, and then I did the still shot of me with the poll. Okay, so invite in your stories. Share your personal development. That's part of our power hour, or part of some some hour during the day. Um, share your personal development quotes in there. Show people that you're growing and you're investing in yourself. Um, shout out other challengers. Recognize people in your stories. It's so easy to do. I can take a screenshot of, of Krista's Instagram feed and say, you should be following um, committed, I can't remember what your, <laughs> what your name is, um, the Grace and Games, that's what she is. You should be following Krista, Grace and Gaines. You know, recognize other people. Shout out challengers. I like to share challenger success stories in my in my Instagram stories a lot because um, that just shows that, hey, we are helping people. I'm inviting people to do this. They're doing it and they're getting results. If you don't have a lot of challengers yet, use our success stories. Use somebody else in the challenge group that you're in. Um, but you can recognize in stories. Um, definitely, let's see, power hour. Um, invite, be proof of the products. You know, show people that you're drinking Shakeology. Uh, you don't have to be constantly saying, I'm drinking Shakeology, but take a picture of it with your Shakeology bag in the background or with your Shakeology canister in the background or share a recipe. Say, this is my superfood shake. I've got vegan vanilla, I've got almond butter, I've got a banana, I've got almond milk and water, boom, that's my breakfast. You know, that's a really good way to be proof of the products in stories. And of course, obviously show your workouts and things like that because people love to watch those but play with it. If you're not using stories, start using it, okay? Um, because people love to watch it. And what I've found is that I have a lot of people that watch my stories that don't read my posts, okay? And so if you make a post that you want those people to really go back and read, um, this one up here at the top, I just screenshotted my page and I wrote on it that I wanted people to go read it because that was a coaching post. It was about money um, and it was just, it was something from my heart and I wanted to make sure that people read it and saw it, okay? So I redirected them back to there. Um, let's see what else about stories. So definitely use those to recruit, um, challengers without a doubt. Do your power. That's what I want. I want to challenge you guys. Do your power hour every single day in your stories. Okay. Invite, they go away within 24 hours. It's not like you're obnoxious or annoying people. Like if people watching your stories, they want to be watching your stories. Okay. So um, it goes away every 24 hours. So definitely be doing that power hour every day. I love to share my devotions. I love to share just things that God has on my heart that I feel like would help other women. Um, if you go and you look, you can, you can follow me and see what I'm doing, but there are lots of other people who are doing it probably way better. Uh, but Andrea Crowder does have a really good training on stories. Um, one thing that I am doing next week and that my coach has challenged us to do is to do a day in the life of a coach. And so I'm switching to recruiting coaches here, okay? So stay, stick with me. Um, a day in the life of a coach. Uh, and I'm gonna use stories to do this. And I've already promoted it once and I'm gonna promote it more this weekend. But on Tuesday, I'm basically going to show people like how I make coaching work for me and my family, okay? And so um, I'm going to just from, from sunup to sundown show people what I do. And I will be on stories a little bit more than I normally am. Uh, but I want people to see how I, I'm a mom, I'm a, I'm a teacher, you know, I'm a wife. I have all these things going on, but I can still make this fit into my lifestyle. Because coaching is not just for people that can do it full time. Coaching is for anybody who, who desires to do it, who has that passion and wants to help people. And it doesn't have to be full-time. It can be part-time. It can be hobby. And I kind of really want to communicate that to people. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just this. Like, I'm going to take these questions. I'm going to answer them. You know, I'm going to start my day with my, my pre-workout meal, obviously, because the 80-day obsession and my energize. I'm going to do my devotion. I'm going to my check in with challengers before I get up. I typically do that. I'm going to talk about the fact that my workout is part of my job. You know, like I love to work out and do it for me and to stay healthy, but I also do it to motivate other women. And like I, 
my job is taking care of my body. I mean, like, how cool is that? Um, you know, I'm going to talk about how I fit my workout in, what I do. I'm a, a lot of people don't realize I work full time, that I am a college history instructor. Um, I have class on Tuesday. I also chose that day because I have class on Tuesday. I have to teach. And so, like, I'm going to talk about that and show how I make this work in my pockets of time. Um, I'm also going to share customer coach stories, success stories. Um, and I have a list over here of a lot of things like I'm going to talk about like the wins. I'm going to talk about the struggles because I don't think it's fair to just show all the good stuff. It is a struggle. I have to sacrifice. I have to give up TV time. I have to give up, um, you know, like staying up late and watching TV or doing certain things. You know, there are times where I don't go out to dinner with girlfriends or, or drink the glass of wine because like I'm trying to, to lead by example and things like that. Um, and so I'm going to be sharing that throughout the day. And then I will give a clear call to action um, at the end of the day and say, you know, hey, anybody want to join my team now? I'm also going to follow that up with daily coaching posts. I'm going to every single day um, from now until the end of the month, make at least one coaching post. And you may hear that and think, oh my gosh, like what in the world, what are you going to talk about? Like what do, what do I have to talk about? Um, and this is where I challenge you guys to sit down and just do a brain dump. Um, and I'm not just talking about like the workouts and the income. But like, how is your life different since becoming a coach? And these are just some examples that I jotted down really quickly. Um, you know, things like income does matter. Obviously, that's a huge benefit to what we do. My family is healthier. You know, I have some of the most incredible friendships with women that I never would have met. Um, I've gotten to travel. I'm going to travel with this job. Um, spiritually, you know, God has changed me a lot and forced me to, to um, realize some things. I've been convicted of some things, and he's definitely drawn me closer to him. Uh, physical goals, obviously, transformation photos, uh, daily accountability. Like, I would probably not be... <laughs> getting up at 4.30 and doing time nutrition if it wasn't for accountability and being a coach and being in a challenge group. I mean, that's just not my personality. So this that's one of the reasons I became a coach because I had great success with the 21 Day Fix. It worked. I knew it was healthy and sustainable. And so I wanted to keep doing it. And I knew if I was leading other women, if I was posting every single day, then I was more likely to stick with it, right? Um, definitely giving me a sense of purpose that I did not have before I became a coach. You can ask my husband. Like, I love what I do as a coach. As sometimes I struggle. Sometimes I doubt. Sometimes I fear. Yes. But I've never felt a sense of purpose like I have with coaching. Um, definitely increased courage and confidence. You know, we've had date nights that were paid for. Maybe your groceries have been paid for. Um, you know, but think about it. Like, how do you fit this in? What is your goal? What are your focuses? And sit down and get a notebook piece of paper and do a huge brain dump. And I promise you that if you do that, then you're not going to run out of things to talk talk about. So after my day in the life of a coach, I'm going to do seven days of coaching posts and every single one is going to have a call to action. That used to like kind of make me feel icky and salesy, but since I'm sharing just my story, I'm sharing the truth, I'm sharing um, blessings that I have gotten, and you know, I'll shout out other coaches and things like that. Like, I'm not afraid to invite people to this every single day. If somebody had not invited me, then I don't know what our life would look like, honestly. I mean, we would still be, we would still be really, really, really deep in debt. We would still, I would still kind of be just unfulfilled in my job. Um, you know, my kids wouldn't be as healthy as they are. I wouldn't be as healthy as they are. So I am not afraid to invite someone every single day to this to this coaching opportunity. Um, I know it's hard. I know it's overwhelming, but that is where God has changed me, honestly. So I'm not, I'm going to share that. And this is just an example. I did this one the other night. It was a coaching post. I just shared about the fact that we were able to pay for a car repair that was really kind of expensive for us, you know, and that in the past we would not have had that money. Like we, I don't know where that money would have come from. It would have probably gone on a credit card, you know? And so that was something that I really was excited to share and invite people to do this. And I'm not going to make this sound in my post like coaching is easy because I know that it's not. It's a challenge. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth sticking with it. It's worth um, showing up. And I'm going to communicate the good and the hard as well. So I challenge you guys to do that as well. Um, 
So if you guys want to do that, which I do challenge, especially if you're at Success Club, but even if you're not at Success Club, like, will you do this? Will you use Instagram stories? Will you do like a day in the life of a coach? Even if you're a brand new coach and all you do is you get up, you check into your challenge group, you do a little power hour somewhere, and then you go to bed. Like if that's all you do as a coach right now, you can still share that. I mean, obviously I, I spend a lot more time on coaching now that I have a team and that I'm three and a half years into it. But when I was a brand new coach, like I literally spent an hour tops, two hours, um, on, on my coaching business. And that's how I got started. That's how I built it for like a year. I mean, and when we're done here, like we'll screenshot, I'll screenshot a picture of everybody on this call. We'll talk about, I just had a coaching um, training call with my team and you can, you know, you can share that. That's a, that's a way to talk about coaching without having to be like, you know, write this huge long post, just screenshot it and put it in your stories and show people what you're doing. Um, so I'm challenging you guys to do this. When will your sneak peek be? Obviously, it needs to be by the end of the month. How many coaches do you want to recruit? Maybe you want to recruit one coach. Maybe you want to recruit five. I don't have the time to recruit 10 coaches. I want. I like to recruit three or four coaches a month because that's all I can handle. That's all I can work with. If you're still trying to hit Success Club, do the same thing, but challenge yourself, set a goal. How many challengers are you going to recruit this month? Just because I'm at like Success Club 14 this month, I'm not gonna stop recruiting challengers because there are people out there to help. Um, and I am going to do a business opportunity call next Monday night on the 29th after this, after, after the sneak peek, after the seven days of coaching posts, I'm going to be inviting people to this call on Monday night at eight o'clock. And it's just going to be a 30, 40 minute business opportunity call. You can invite to that. You can invite to that or you can run your own. You can invite to the business opportunity call or you can pre-record a video about coaching, about what we do. And you can send that to people who say they're interested. You don't have to do everything that I am doing, but make it your own. If you're not ready to do that, invite them to my business opportunity call, or I can share one with you that I've done in the past. Um, and so I'm challenging you guys to commit to talking about coaching. And you know, like I, I realize that some of you guys are not where I'm at. So if you're not willing to talk about coaching every day, talk about it three times next week. You know, that's not, that's not too much. Talk about it three different times. You can come up with three different things to, to share about, about coaching. Um, and if you do it, I want you to share those posts with us in Team Take Heart so that we can each cheer each other on. And if you write a post and you're like, eh, I'm not sure how this sounds, share it in Team Take Heart. People will love to give you feedback and encourage you, okay? Because that's what we're here for. Um, and I want to end with this because I had a challenger. If you read my post yesterday at lunchtime, I had a challenger who I talked to on the phone um, and she said no less than like five times, because you were bold enough to share, my family has this. Okay. And it was, it was like all three or four different reasons, three or four different things that I had posted about, whether it be publicly or in our challenge group. She kept saying, because you were bold enough to share, you know, my daughter saw that and she has more confidence because you were bold enough to share. Like I reached out to you or I, you know, I responded to your challenge group. I'm drinking Jakeology now. My husband loves it. You know, I have more energy. And so I kept thinking about that. And I kept thinking, you know, like, I don't like, I don't like the praise a lot because I don't feel like it's about me because I'm not bold. I'm not, I'm not that woman who, who is just like super, I, it, it may not look like it, but I'm a little bit of an introvert and, and not always confident in myself. But this business was given to me not to be an introvert, but just to share my story because my story is not my own. You know, my story about my hormones, my story about my cholesterol, my story about our income, my story about my self-confidence, that's not mine to keep to myself. Um, you know, and I love this verse. This guides me so often. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. In other, in other versions, it's self-control. But like, if I'm not willing to share the hard, if I'm not willing to share something that may be difficult for me to share, that I don't help anybody. If I'm not willing to reach out and invite somebody that I notice is starting to follow me, is starting to like my, 
like my photos to starting to comment or things like that, if I'm too scared to invite that person, then I don't help anybody. And so I want to challenge you guys, be bold, like be bold, pray over that word. Um, I was reading in Genesis this morning in chapter like 22 or 23, I can't remember, but about the servant who goes to find Rebecca. You know, he prayed before he went, God, please bless this journey, make it fruitful. Or sit down and pray that over your business. Before you do your power hour, ask God. Say, hey, bless this. Make it fruitful. Please help me to be bold in inviting this person and writing this post. And please bless this, you know, if that's your will. Um, and he said, if it's not, then I'll go back. That's what he said. Okay. So, you know, like same thing. You can pray that prayer. Don't be scared to ask God to bless this because I'm telling you, he will. If your heart is good, if your mission is pure, then there are people out there that need your help. Okay. Um, that's all I got. Do you guys have anything you want to talk about? I'm unmuting you all. So mute yourself if you don't really need it. I Do you have anything to add to that? Carrie, are you doing stories? I, I am. Okay. Yeah, I try to do it as often as I can, but, you know, some days. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything you want to talk about other than that? I have a question, Rachel. Mm -hmm. At what point should we transition from our personal Facebook page to a different page that's more focused on our business? Okay, so that's a very good question. And I personally did not start my like page until I was like probably a year into my business um, because I started with, like I said, less than 200 people. So I had a lot of room to grow. You know, I had a lot of, of people to add. I think you can only add on your personal page like 5,000 people maybe. Um, and then your cup, you're capped off, but you're not with a like page. But also the thing with a like page is that when you create one, you start absolutely from ground zero. Like you have okay. to build it up. Um, and their algorithms wise, you, you have to really like, and I'm not saying don't do it. I think it's a good thing. I use mine now and I actually sponsor ads. I can sponsor that. I, that's how I found a lot of people, um, you know, it, by sponsoring an ad. Um, and you can do that once you get to a certain point with your like page. Um, but I would say that if you are still, you know, kind of new in your business, the like page is for when you get run through your warm market. And so if you don't feel like you've gone through your warm market at all, I wouldn't think about it. Um, and definitely I would just focus on, on adding friends on Facebook, using hashtags on Instagram, following people and, and connecting that way. I mean, just that's the, that's the good old fashioned hard work way is to add five friends, connect with five people, Hey girl, five people and invite five people every single day. Okay. And so that I, I really have not started to see traction and growth from my like page until now, probably in the last six months. So, um, you can do it though. You can go ahead and create it and kind of be playing with it in your spare time. If you want to, I don't discourage that, but you have to start with a like page. Okay. And the reason I ask is because, I mean, there's so much more that I would like to share, but so many people on my page are from church yeah. within my community. And I just struggle with that because, you know, I've gotten some great results from Beachbody. Mm -hmm. I would like to share more, but I'm also trying very hard to be, um, I don't know, I forget the word. Yes, as yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm struggling with right now. I, I understand that. And actually, let's see, Hannah's on here. She shared something on Instagram. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. But uh, last week, and she got some pushback from someone at her church. It was not nice. It was not kind. I don't feel like it was constructive pushback. Um, but she did. And so you have to be careful. And I remember the first time that I shared my transformation of me and my bathing suit from like day one. Like, I, you know, I talked to Matt about it. Mm -hmm. We did pray about it. I actually just shared it in my blog post. So I kind of put it in my blog post and then shared the link to my Facebook page that way. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think that you have to be guided by your own convictions in, and what you feel like is um, God wants you to share. Um, but I think, too, that stories is a good place to do that. You know, share your before and your after photo. Um and tell people, you know, like I shared my transformation in my stories, go check it out. 
Um, and then, you know, I just, I think you have to be guided by that. Uh, okay. but you know, if you want to do that, if you want to go ahead and do that, you can create your like page and start sharing stuff there and I can show you how to link it so that people that are on your personal page can find Dale Carter fitness, you know, that, that kind of thing. Okay. I'll, I'll think about it for a little bit. I'm really thinking about maybe just sharing it in my story. So yeah. I think I'll start there. And you can also make your Instagram page a business page so that you can sponsor posts if you wanted to do that. Okay. So, that's so just an option. is that different from it being a public page? Just, just that when it's a business page, you can, you can sponsor posts. Yeah. That's the only difference really. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Some questions? No. All right, guys, that's all I got. So my plan is to do this the third Saturday of every month, okay? So 8 o'clock, third Saturday of every month. Um, and I'll share some, some nuggets with you. But I'm going to share these slides in our team page, too. So if you want to go back and reference them. Um, and let me know. Please tell me. Like, are you going to do the Instagram Stories Challenge? Um, and if you need help, let me know that, too. Oh, I was going to tell you, too, Canva. Um, the last thing on Canva, now they have an Instagram Stories template did you know that yeah they okay i had to google it first to find it um but let me do it real fast just so i can show you guys okay they have a template because you can't just take always just like a regular photo and make it fit oh wait here it is um i want to take a picture before we go please just so you go so this is it so i did this in the, the it's a canva template for um instagram stories um, and I don't know where it is because I couldn't find it. I actually had to Google it and find one of those that said like edit this template. But if you Google Instagram stories, Canva, you'll find it. Okay. And so you can actually like create them on, 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 um, your computer. Cause I don't like Canva on my phone. It doesn't work well. Um, you can create them on your computer and then you can, um, why can't I? Okay. Then you can actually like you pull up the app on your phone and they're saved there. And so you can just upload them from your phone. It's pretty cool. So if you want to get more creative with it, which I probably will do with like my day in the life of stories kind of thing. Okay. All right, guys, let, um, I'm going to take a picture just with my phone. Honestly, if you want to unblock yourself, you can, if you don't, that's totally okay. But I'll take a picture and I'll share it with you guys, unless you all take your own. Everybody smile. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anybody else want a photo before we go? No. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.